Hi, this is Pamela Riemenschneider, retail editor for Blue Book Services. And I'm here in Austin, Texas, where I was at South by Southwest while you, Greg, were in Kansas City. So. Yes, but I was in Florida last week. And of course, I didn't tell my kids I was in Orlando, just, just to be sure. But uh, <laughs> yes, Southeast Produce Council's Southern Exposure was last week, and it was a great event as usual. And the theme this year was food as medicine. And so the keynote speaker in one of the sessions focused on food as medicine, which is a different message than food as health, in mm -hmm. that food as medicine, you have short-term gains um, and short-term benefits like taking pills. Yeah. So I really like that message. Uh, but on the expo floor, what I really liked is how many new products out there are taking on the snacking category. Because yeah. you and I both know having kids that uh, it seems like kids have to eat at least once an hour. And so the more <laughs> often we can have fresh produce and, and healthy food for them to snack on, that's a win for us. And I think uh, a lot of parents are in that boat. And uh, when you're talking about marketing to millennials, not only are they snacking, but a lot of millenni millennials are feeding their kids now. So it's a great market to be in. It sounds like South by Southwest is very much on experience and immersion. And it's, <laughs> it sounds Definitely. like PMA really went for that and really got a lot of benefit out of that. And they had, you know, live demos of, of people making flower crowns and, and bouquets. And you could see it streaming away from uh, Rainy Street as you walked closer to other venues as everyone had a bouquet or, or one of these crowns or something like that. And that's as part of the experience is to feel like you're living there and living in the moments. And there's some takeaways from that for produce marketers as well, I think. Um, one of the most fascinating things I saw wasn't really related to produce. It was cheese. Um, and you, you know I like cheese. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like might be a little even underselling my affinity for cheese. And the Wisconsin Cheese Board had a two-room like cheese extravaganza that I, I th it was a total immersion experience that people were waiting hours in line to go eat cheese. Um, and, and wouldn't produce have an amazing opportunity to create some, some kind of um, immersive experience like that? Um, it would certainly smell better than the cheese room. Um, it would smell a lot better. Yeah, yeah. Well, why, why don't we do a berry room instead of cheese? Um, uh, apples and citrus are extremely fragrant and good if you've ever been in a packing house. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't it be really cool for produce to have a greater presence at these consumer shows where we're talking about the future of food and telling our story, but also exposing the people to how uh, how we grow, how we pack, how we ship, and how we get the produce to um, the store, um, and and then also you know feed them snacks um, because that was basically the cheese and snacks and stickers. I've got all these Wisconsin cheese stickers. I'm going to give them to everyone. Well, the immersion, uh, produce would be fantastic at that, having a produce room, having a floral room, and that would key on the emotion as mm -hmm. opposed to educating consumers about how the industry works. Just put them in a room full of all this beautiful produce, let them eat it, let them smell it, let them experience it. Uh, that's the, I think that's one of the lessons that we should take from this. All right, I think that wraps up this week in review for the Produce Reporter newsletter. If you want to catch some more, sign up at ProduceBlueBook.com. All right, thanks, Greg. All right, see ya.